Uh, Charlie, it's yours. Take it away. Right. It's uh, my pleasure to introduce for our last talk today, uh, Anjana Bajrinarayanan. Uh, Anjana, uh, take it away. Okay, thanks. Thanks, uh, Shri, um, Charlie, and everyone else for um, hosting this really amazing series and for having me be a part of it. It's just such a pleasure. Um, I'm going to, I've not prepped a, a really formal presentation. I've put in stuff to help me remember what I want to say. Uh, and so I'm going to use it uh, to help me do that. So um, I'm, I'm, what I thought I'll do is I'll give you a, a sort of a, a brief trajectory of, of how I've come to be where I am right now. Um, and then also tell you about um, what parts of science and um, interaction with scientists um, inspire me um, uh, to do what I do. Okay, so um, who I who am I? I am Anjana Badrinarayanan. Um, I am based right now in Bangalore, India, um, and this is where I started and where I landed up finally. So I grew up in India. Um, I grew up actually all over India. I um, traveled a lot along with my family, um, and finally ended up doing my undergraduate degree um, in a city called Madras or Chennai. Um, after finishing that, I went for my master's in biology, which was this um, integrative biology course studying everything from single cells to, you know, ecosystems um, at the University of Oxford, um, following which I did a PhD um, in microbiology, cell biology, I mean, essentially um, multidisciplinary work um, in, in, in microbes um, uh, with David Sherratt at the University of Oxford. Um, I finished my PhD and I moved to MIT to work with Michael Laub, following on um, some of the themes that I had become interested in um, while I was in Dave's lab. Um, so I went to Boston after that. Um, and once I finished um, my postdoc, I applied for positions to go back to India. And um, that's where I have my group now for the past six years. I'm based in Bangalore, India, at the National Center for Biological Sciences. So a little bit of you know going around the world a bit to to get to where I am, um, and 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 so why did I start with biology? So I've been really, I, I have always been quite interested in biology, and I think I'm a little bit of an oddball with um, Shri's general assembly of things. I'm I am a biologist. I actually have zero training in physics or any quantitative sciences. Um, but I am actually, you know, on the fringe, I hang around with the physicists and learn a lot from them. I do like to apply um, quantitative principles to the type of work we do um, in the lab, but I started as a biologist. Um, and uh, as, as an undergraduate student, I studied biochemistry. Um, that was my undergraduate degree. But then when I went um, to do my master's, I got exposed to a lot of other model systems. I worked on puffins. Um, on an island off of Wales for um, a bit. I studied the evolution of the Hox gene clusters in coelacanth and lungfish. Um, I also studied, um, you know, uh, resource allocation and uh, long-term evolution in Rathophila melanogaster as an undergraduate researcher. Um, but then um, when I was doing my master's, there was this talk that David Sherritt gave um, on bacteria. And it wasn't really a talk about bacteria. He doesn't, the talk was more about DNA. Um, and this was the first time I started to think about what it means for any living system to have genetic material and what it means for any living system to organize and faithfully propagate that genetic material. And all of the organization we see in macromolecular scale suddenly became um, equally, if not more important um, in inside a, a single cell. And that sort of just blew my mind that a single inside a single cell, um, something as small as a bacterial cell, you can get this complex organization um, and function uh, and, and, and just trying to understand what are the principles that govern um, this faithful propagation of DNA became something I, be I became so fascinated about. And, 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 and the reason why this particularly struck me was when Dave gave his talk, he talked about this protein called FTSK, which is in uh, bacterial systems, required to make sure that the DNA gets segregated efficiently. Um, and he made an analogy of the rate at which this protein works, um, com com comparing it to a Ferrari um, on the racetrack. 
And that was just mesmerizing, right? That you can take um, proteins and study them in this manner that we tend to study only these larger ecological scale um, uh, events in biology uh, just sort of hooked me on. And so from there, there was no turning back. I became um, a hardcore cell biologist, um, applying a lot of um, biophysical principles to understanding how genomes are organized in cells and then how they are also segregated. Um, and this has now become sort of, a, I think, an obsession, at least for now, till now, till who knows when, just trying to understand how cells make sure that they can faithfully divide um, across generations across millennia to allow for life to be the way it is around us now. Um, and so after finishing with Dave, um, I wanted to study more uh, the idea of genome maintenance. And that's where I went for my postdoc and studied another model system, Colobacter crescentis, um, and, uh, to, and started to ask questions about how genomes are maintained in this organism. And so um, from there, um, I've been running a lab of my own over the past six years, and I this this logo uh, my lab made for my tenure talk, uh, which I gave a few months ago, and it sort of summarizes everything that um, I have been interested in, we have been interested in as a group, and also very beautifully, um, they left this, this sort of segue for where all we can go further. And so it sort of summarizes the, the whole sort of scientific trajectory we've had so far, I started with these proteins and how they're involved in um, organizing or compacting genomes inside bacteria. And over the past few years, my lab, um, together, we've worked on various aspects of genome maintenance and microbial systems going all the way from cell size maintenance to mutations, um, how partners search for each other, um, how transcription regulation occurs under damage, to even going off and you know thinking about making a startup company from some some um, you know side things that we see happening in our microbial cells, and you know going further to to other microbial systems and understanding how they um, adapt to their environments. Right. So this is about the science. This is what sort of motivates me uh, to keep going. I am really excited to understand how cells adapt uh, to stressful environments using the ability to mutate as well as preserve genomes and maintain a balance between both. And we'll see where the science takes us from now. Um, but more than, and during the scientific sort of journey, I think what, what I have learned is it's not just about the science, it's also about the people we work with. And I think for me, that's the most valuable, um, valuable thing uh, to hold on to. And I want to give you some examples of, of this here. So this picture here is from my graduation ceremony. Um, that's David Sherritt, um, who was my mentor um, here with his wife, Lydia. Um, this is Rodrigo, who was my co-mentor. So he was a senior uh, PhD student and then a postdoc in the lab and um, sort of shepherded me through my PhD along with his wife, Noelia. Um, and that's my mom uh, there with my sister. Uh, they came down to Oxford for my graduation. Um, this was taken in 2012. Um, this picture you see here was taken uh, day before yesterday at a meeting where Rodrigo, um, who's there and now has aged and has got all this white hair, um, and Zindan, who also was in the lab with me and Rodrigo at the same time, and me are together. Um, giving talks at a bacterial cell biology meeting. Um, and that's what these relationships are, right? I mean, um, great labs generate not just great science, but bring together fantastic people and allow them to develop these beautiful relationships that last through decades. And so this is an example of that. Another example I want to highlight is this picture here of Tung Lee and me. So Tung and I did our postdocs together at the same time in my clouds lab. Um, and ever since we started around the same time, and ever since we started, we have had at least one project as a collaboration project together, and it doesn't stop. We still have a collaboration project together now, although we both run our own labs, have our own questions. We see each other well, at least once a year in person at, um, at a meeting or another, um, but we also just catch up with each other to um, you know, build new uh, projects, et cetera. And so, you know, these, these relationships are what make science also fun. They take you in new directions in terms of your scientific journey, but also in terms of personal journey. 
Um, they also help buffer through stressful times um, and science can be stressful. Uh, and so I, I want to highlight how much um, these relationships also mean to, to the scientific journey um, I've been able to, to, to have the privilege of taking. Uh, I'm going all over the place with my pictures. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, um, yeah, so then this is my lab. Um, and this, again, I want to highlight for the same reason, for the fact that I think we have to value a lot the people who come through our labs and our lives. This is... Um, my lab over the course of a few years now. So this was when we started. Um, this was year one, year two, year three, um, hanging out in general. And then we, you know, we've gone through tough times, gone through exciting times and um, stuck together, made each other grow. And so I think that's also something that um, I think is really important uh, to value and, and cherish. Uh, and finally, I want to highlight also partners, right? So this is my partner. It's, he's Krishnan, and he's not a scientist. Um, uh, and I think that, again, is something that makes me who I am. Uh, he's somebody who keeps me super grounded to realize there's actually a world outside um, the lab that we keep thinking about. Um, and sometimes we have to remember our context also uh, and, and um, inspire ourselves from the world around us, not just the world that we are the four walls that a lab environment gives us. And so for that, I, I really value um, this person as well. Um, yes, yeah, so that's basically it. I'm happy to answer many questions um, about anything uh, at this point. And I'll leave it to you, Shri. Great. Thank you, Anjana, for a fantastic talk. I'm uh, applauding on behalf of the audience. Um, so I'd like to start with one question that I had, um, talking about the, the relationships that you've had over the years with people who you continue to see at conferences and to work with, how much of the continuity is um, starting out with the right people who you really connect with versus um, you know, actively maintaining and cultivating these relationships? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I think, I think it's a combination of both. A, you have to have a good match, but more importantly, it's an investment. Um, you know, we take time to talk to each other um, once a month. You know, we will make sure we schedule Zoom calls um, and discuss science, give each other updates on projects we are running with. Um, there's also this trust that builds with time then that you are able to share your work, um, get critical feedback also. So this, some of these people are my critical feedback. That's where papers go to before they go to journals, for example. Um, and that's so important also. Um, and it's a two-way thing, right? I take the liberty to get them to do it, but then they do it to me also. And I take the time to give them feedback. So it really needs this active investment of time. Um, and sometimes you can feel like, oh, maybe you don't, you don't need it anymore because you don't have the time to deal with this. But I think um, uh, we, we under, undervalue, I think, a lot how much these relationships actually can help us um, get through uh, many things in science and also develop bigger, newer ideas, push ourselves in, in directions we wouldn't go in otherwise. Um, and so, yeah, I, th I think um, although the match has to be um, organic, the keeping of the relationship has to be an investment uh, and it's worth it, uh, I would say. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, applauding again on behalf of the audience.